Almost as soon as Asian immigrants set foot in this country, ethnic scapegoating followed right behind. Chinese workers in the mid-1800s helping to build the railroads heard they were taking American jobs. Asians were never regarded as Americans, meaning that they were never given citizens' rights at the beginning of the Republic. In 1871, a violent mob in Los Angeles lynched at least 17 Chinese residents, a massacre fueled by white resentment toward the growing immigrant population. In 1882, the animosity led Congress to pass the first and only law restricting an ethnic group coming into the country, the Chinese Exclusion Act. It lasted until 1943. You make them the other through legislation, such as the passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act. To be an other is not simply, oh, you're someone else. You know, you're just not an American. It's not like that. It's also about the process of being objectified, of being less than human. Soon after, what many consider one of the most shameful moments in American history, Japanese Americans treated as the suspect enemy in their own nation, placed in internment camps during World War II. Two thirds of those Japanese Americans were US born Americans, and they were forcibly relocated and incarcerated without due process. For decades, Hollywood has both reflected and reinforced portrayals of Asian Americans as perpetual foreigners, from Breakfast at Tiffany's to 16 Candles. What's happening, hot stuff? Turning racism into laughs. When you see nothing but that clownish, that buffoonish image, that implacably alien image constantly being painted on our faces, then it's so much easier to not think of us as human. But of all the racist stereotypes, some of the most insidious are those that hypersexualize Asian women, frequently portrayed as sex objects, like in Austin Powers. Austin Powers is very sexy. Or the submissive women in massage parlors, like in Rush Hour 2. Oh my God. Asian women as the focus of the Western male gaze is nothing new, playing out in real life with the U.S. military in Asia, fueling sex industries that exploited Asian women. But it's this scene from Full Metal Jacket that has permeated American culture like few others. Me love you long time. Those words used repeatedly in movies like The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Me love you long time. And TV shows like South Park. Me love you long time. Those are the lines that people remember, and it haunts us. Images have power. Stories have power. Activists say the toxic mix of racism and misogyny in these portrayals influence the way Asian women are treated in society. When you think of humans as objects and when you erase their humanity, then it is no surprise that our lives are seen as worthless. In this year of racial reckoning, API activists say the attacks must end, and that starts with stamping out the underlying conditions of otherism and racism that feed violence. Racism and xenophobia are national problems. The only way to survive this pandemic, the only way to survive these violent attacks is to work together and recognize our common humanity. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.